I do want to be sure I thank Paula, Savannah News Press, Mark, and the whole umbrella of anybody who has anything to do with this. And I appreciate you coming. Um, as Paula mentioned, I uh, my background is basically either one-on-one -on -one training or teaching groups. So if I'm not a good speaker, just don't. Because <laughs> I've never done speech. So, um, But there's so much information that's kind of ingrained. Um, I do teach a lot of classes. My biggest ones that I've been loving is Parkinson's uh, Balance. Um, I think she names them. Um, we don't, now we've changed the word. It's no longer seniors, it's become active aging. Um, sometimes titles. You know, you know, training is so, at least that's what they're telling us. So, um, you are actively aging. Um, so, anyway, um, I, I know we have only so much time, so I'm going to just dive right in. Paula did print out some sheets, and I'm going to start with the first one that says fiscal inactivity. Um, I'm sure some of y'all heard smoking is the new, uh, sitting is now the new smoking. It used to be don't smoke, don't smoke, that's all you ever heard. But now um, <coughs> inactivity is actually surpassed that. And um, it's some scary figures. If you look, we're um, number four of the different, I'm not going to read them out to you. But um, listed number four is the inactivity. Actually, I'm jumping down to the next one under it. But um, so fiscal inactivity um, is right in there with being overweight, high cholesterol, um, some scary figures that you know. I'm sure all of us know someone who's either been related to cancer or any of these things that are listed. So um, we need to kind of jump on it and because the figures are not getting better. They're just getting worse. And even though I'm going to be kind of negative with some figures that are out there, I do have some positive news. So keep that in mind. That's coming later. Um, there are studies that show, because I know some of you are in the workforce, uh, men, 85% uh, of men, 66% of women, today in America are generally working over 40 hours. So, and then what do we do after we get off work? Generally, we go to another activity that's gonna relax us. Maybe it's the TV, you know, maybe it's the computer catching up. So, um, what are we doing before and after? And not everybody goes to the gym before or after, or can go take a walk after that. You're just too mentally drained. So that's why I want to hopefully, my goal is sneak in some activities you can be doing at work that will build it. Um, some people will come, they look up, see if this is you, what's this pain that I've gotten? And it's not, and then you try to go through that checklist of well, what did I do yesterday? And honestly, it's not something you did yesterday. It is a build up. It is a build up of what we're doing on a daily basis. So you have to kind of go mentally back 10 years. What have I been doing? How have I been mainly sitting? How have I mainly been standing? What have I been doing? Um, and people who drive that are sitting in the car, they're getting those tight hip flexors. So it's causing this body to see it as people come in. That body is just coming from our daily activities. That's not any one activity. So, okay, let's go to, we've already hit on the inactivity. Um, also, if you, how many of you, let me just ask that, how many of you work that are here? I kind of like to get a, okay. And, and this is going to relate, even if you don't work, you're like, well, dang, why did I come? Um, <laughs> it's going to get you too, I promise. We're going to get everybody. Um, but just for um, those of you that work, if you can encourage, if you're not the owner of the business, if you can encourage your workers to work, there's so many benefits. For every dollar, and I know y'all probably can't see this, but for every dollar that you put into that employee, you're going to get back $3.20. What does that mean? You're going to have fewer people coming in sick. You're going to have fewer people that are absent. From that you're going to have more productive workers because they have more energy 
Um, these are just a, a few things. Um, and then your health care, obviously, is going to go down. So you're going to get that money back the more you can. And, and we're going to talk about ways that you can also incorporate that into it. It doesn't have to be money that you put into it. There are so many other activities that you can do that won't even cost you done. Um, another not so good news. <laughs> All right, so this is where do we stand as Americans in, like in Georgia. And unfortunately, Georgia is on the worst. We, we and of course, it's like a lot of southern states, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Um, we, the lowest you can get as far as our percentage statistics, we're at 28% of inactivity versus somebody, if you're like, well, what do you mean? That's, we're talking diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, physical inactivity by state. Um, the ones that we aren't quite as bad on is cardiovascular disease. There are some other states that are worse than us on that. But um, it, that's just kind of, to me, a scary figure because of where we live. Think about our environment. Um, and then another thing we have, and this one, Paul made a copy on the table, is your recommended activity. You're sitting there, well, how much activity am I supposed to be doing? We recommend that you get, I'm just going to break it down, 30 minutes, five days a week. Because if you look at the whole picture and you say, I got to do 150 minutes, I don't even have a minute really to try to work in with my busy schedule. So you got to think of little increments you can do. Um, something that you're kind of also emphasizing today is your active minutes. And what that means is if you're going on a walk, it's great that you went walking for 30 minutes, but you want to sneak in 10 minutes of that as a faster pace. And does that make sense? And we're going to have a question and answer if you're like, you yeah, didn't make sense on that. <laughs> but um, so you, it's, now they're not only, and, and some of us have the fitness devices. Um, it will come across on your, your it'll say, how many minutes you exercised or how many steps you took, but how much of that is actually intense. And what intensity does is actually gets that metabolism going for you. So um, it's great if you hit that, you take it by baby steps. That, and if you're like, I don't do anything all week, then think, okay, two days this week, I'm gonna go walk for 10 minutes. Um, something is always better than nothing. Okay, and you can always break that up. We're going to relate, and it, let me just go ahead and hit If you're at work and you're like, okay, I'm not going to exercise before or after I leave work, um, you've got to think of that lunch hour maybe that you have, um, that it would be good to just go and leave and eat, but can two of those days of the week be something that this is my time, this is my health, it's important to me, so I'm going to set aside this time. Um, so think about that if you can't do it before and after work. And think about, I just really like to emphasize your intensity on that. Um, something else, and this is on the other side of that paper where um, they're real, well, something that's going to really help you make that goal is going to be increasing your partner and group activities. This could be anything from, it could be a team sponsored event that maybe y'all meet out somewhere and you're either doing like co-ed softball, co-ed volleyball, um, co-ed something, <laughs> just something, it's co-ed walking okay. at Lake Mayor, anything. So, and by, what's really good too, for those of you that work, if you're doing some type of physical activity where you have to work together, that's going to also transfer back into the work atmosphere where you kind of see things at a different angle and you just kind of find new, new ways to accomplish that goal. Um, just a few other statistics, and I'll let you guess. So there's, there, I'm going to give you five age groups, and I just want you to guess which one you think is the most active. You've got the 18 to 24. <clears throat> I see a few in here. They're going to say they are. I know they are. Um, 35 to 44 is your second age group. Um, 45 to 54 is the third group. 55 to 64 is your fourth. 
and then fifth would be 65 up. So how many of you, and you can just say it out loud, think which which age group do you think is going to be? One, two, three, four, five. So of course I'm hearing every single number. <laughs> so, raise your hand if you said 35 to 44. So you're right. Yeah. You're the one. Um, so unfortunately, I, I feel like I'm so pessimistic. I'm going to end on a good note. Um, unfortunately, it gets worse. You have, um, say, 18 to 24. They're kind of at the 25% of the inactivity. Then it drops to 23, meaning that the 35 to 44 get more active. And then it starts climbing back up. Um, when you get to 65 and above, you're hitting 40% of those people are in that. Okay. So, I didn't do the study. <laughs> um, and then this was just a scary statistic to me. Um, it's probably not like, unless you have a teenager. It says today, 75% of all 10s are not fit enough to join the military. So, that's pretty scary to me because... We need our military, right? Okay. Um, and then, is, is it any wonder, because 48% of all of our high schools have no physical education added in there. Now they're replacing it with your computer and your art, which has a place in the program, but we still got to have it. Um, and then, for those of you who have kids and grandkids, 9 million kids are totally inactive in any of the 105 different activities that are offered for them. 48 million kids are not active according to the CDC standards. So the main point I took from this is the main thing our kids are doing today is exercising their fingers through texting, computer. Okay. Um, so we got to get them moving, right? Got to get them moving. Um, now I get to some positive news. One of the biggest things is how exercise will really help increase your brain. I don't want to get too technical, but there is um, pictures that they've done. And they, they like did an MRI, the person just sitting at their desk and how their brain looks, kind of working with the work-related material. Then they take it and say, all right, we want y'all to go walk for 30 minutes and then come back and we'll do the same MRI. It comes back and it is completely a different picture. It just gets those nerve cells going. Um, and there's so many benefits from it. You, you're going to have more energy, more positive. Um, you're going to be able to hit those work-related goals that you're set. Sometimes you just feel like you're stuck. In a, a little fog here because you're you've either been stand staring at your screen for so long, um, you just got to get moving, which will kind of re, re energize you, um, and it'll help you focus better. So now we have um, doing okay on time. Mm -hmm. Cool. We have the eight tips to get fit and healthier at work, and she's got copies down there for you. Um, and feel free, like, you can raise your hand if you're like, well, what about this one? You're not sure. And maybe I left it off. These are just ones that I came up with really quick. Um, reorganize your workspace. And let's take that as well of those of you who don't work. Um, so you have your little computer at home. Um, do you have everything, like, at your work desk or at home within, okay, here's my this and here's that. Um, you can do little things where you have to actually stand up and reach. Um, just reorganize it. Oh, and the stability ball. So, I'm sure y'all seen this and you're like, what is that thing? <laughs> so, this is not something. This is actually something you can sit on. And if you're like, well, what's the difference sitting in that and sitting in a chair? Can I just sit up tall? That makes you sit up tall. There is no slumping on the ball. So, and you can get like one of these, like Target or Walmart. Um, they also sell the little riser underneath, but you do not have to order the fancy ones that Amazon says is here's your little desk that you, or chair that you can order. Um, but that's a great tool because it really, and for those of you who 
majority of people have some back issues going on, sitting on that ball will really help. So we try. And the other thing is, like I said, it's not a you have to do this all day, all week. Try it for, you know, 20 minutes and say, all right, I'm going back in my chair, I'm going to kind of sit comfortable again. Um, I brought this ball too. Um, this could also be a device you could put behind you so it causes you to not go back. Um, they sell this at like different sports places too, but um, especially if you have back issues, this is a great tool if you don't want to kind of sit on the stability ball because you feel like you might fall. If they are kind of unstable sometimes. Um, take the stairs. How, how many of y'all try to take the stairs if you're at a place that has elevator and stairs? Good. So even if you take the elevator going up and you come down on the stairs, that's still making a gradual change. Just kind of sneak something in there and say, okay, I've tried it. Enough to kind of get tested on the waters. Um, and that's going to up your calorie level by going up and down those stairs. Um, Take walk breaks, purposeful, purposeful walk breaks. In other words, um, you're sending Susie Q an email about something or you're fixing to text Joe. Um, get up and walk over there and have some face time where you have to move, number one. And um, it, it's just sometimes to me we lose all that personal communication. And so think about that. It's, it's just going to be just as effective to go talk to them in the face. Unless it's somebody you really don't get along with at work. <laughs> we'll let you decide on that. <laughs> um, having a resistance fan at your desk. I brought just a couple of these. Um, some of y'all that maybe had shoulder issues, you're probably aware of this. Like, oh yeah, I'm used to that. Um, but you can, like... The thing that a lot of the desk is coalescing that I see is this curve and forward. So just exercises where you basically have to pull them back like that will help. Um, you can also apply this to if you have, especially I see a lot of the tight hips on people from desk or jobs, but you can also take that band and like walk across with it and it's going to connect. And you, what I like about bands if you have a weight, you're like, oh shoot, this three pound is way too light or this is too heavy. If you have a band, then you just grab a little bit more band and you'll go, you'll be able to get it. So um, there's 20 million things you can do with it, but it will help you definitely with your muscle tone and you'll just feel better because you're, you're moving. Um, and this was basically this is actually a stretch band because sometimes maybe you worked out that day, but then you get you skip your stretch after that morning. Um, sometimes we just need to stretch and pull our posture. Like there's certain things you can do where you just have to pull it behind you, and these bands work according to your level. Not everybody has to be touching their hands. Just use this band that they. Um, Sometimes we just need to stretch. You just need to take a five minute stretch break. And um, you could always bring in someone or maybe somebody in your group goes, you know, I, go, I do yoga at home. I could probably do yoga. Y'all could all have a yoga one day a week and have one of the members either bring in. I, I don't push personal training. I think personal training is there to help you get set on a program, but not to stay with that person all the time. So maybe get one of those members that are really into fitness that you work with to kind of get it going for you. And all you need for yoga would be a mat, basically. I did bring this yoga block because another thing that we're doing a lot is, for instance, when we sit, I know y'all can't see me, but if we sit, some of us tend to bring those feet way back versus keeping them under. And the reason why a lot of us are walking around with knee issues is because of the tension we're causing on our knees, okay? So I promise you, just sit that out. Um, like push the feet out or prop it on, you know, prop it on something that makes you purposely think about how you're acting on those knees. Um, 
If you tend to have to get in the car a lot, back and forth, um, think about the way that you're getting in and out of the car. Now that sounds kind of really picky, but then again, it goes back to if you keep doing it over and over. So versus somebody like kind of getting out of the car like that, where they're shooting their knee over, you want to do more of a either lift up and stand up or where you actually turn to the outside and push up. Because if you keep doing that, then eventually, I keep waiting for my knees to get back because I show the, the wrong way so much. But, um, you know, so think about that. Think about daily habits, daily habits. Um, another thing you can do that's not even, sometimes it's not even activity related. Um, a lot of us are carrying around a lot of chronic stress, trying to meet those deadlines or, you know, maybe you feel like your space, you don't have enough space where you're at, um, or you have family issues that you're dealing with. So it causes us, therefore, to make the wrong food choices. You know, we just want something quick. Maybe we just go through that drive through because I don't want to think about what I have to fix for lunch. Um, so you could also, at work, you could have what's called the five food group plan where everybody has to bring something from that group or just brown bag day where it has to, you're going to kind of see what everybody brings in and you kind of talk about it like, yeah, you know, I used to do this, but this is a positive. You can really learn from your co-workers or your family very easily. So try to, um, try to really analyze and I brought, um, for some snacks and these things, sometimes we're just so bored. Think about that. Sometimes we're just bored. We just want to put something in our mouth. So if you want to do that, grab something that's going to be on the lower calorie end. These are like those 100 calorie nuts, which are good for you. Popcorn or protein bar. Um, or if you're a muncher like me, if you like almonds. So those are some simple suggestions. Um, Talking about hunger too and being bored, sometimes if you will just walk to the water cooler or wherever you get your water and or your water bottle and just fill it up with cold water. Cold, cold water actually burns more calories than just regular water. Um, so you want to burn some calories, put some ice in there. But um, sometimes we just we just need we're just thirsty. Our our bodies get dehydrated so easily. We live in the South, so there's another reason to um, stay hydrated. Um, I think we got, let's see, stand when you can. Like if you're at the um, computer, uh, and some people have the devices where your, your watch will even tell you, hey, it's time to stand. Um, mine does that, but sometimes I ignore it. <laughs> so don't ignore it. Um, but if you have to proofread something you've been sitting for a while or maybe you're working on a report, um, purposely stand up. Um, if somebody calls you, go ahead and stand up while you're talking to them because it's opening up those hip flexors and it's giving your body a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement. Um, I did talk about the employee contest. That would be something, and like I said, if you don't really have the finances, you could just have a certificates where you actually recognize the people who chose to participate and maybe list the positive daily things that they make. Because those daily things are what's going to carry you through. And if your company does have the money, I know there's one company out here that helps with gym membership. For their employees, like it might be ten percent, or some organizations like the Y may recognize, hey, you're military, hey, you're firearms, some, something like that. Um, but you could, um, or just bring in, like I said, a fitness professional once a week to say, hey, we need a program, we need some ideas, help us get it going. Um, since I'm coming down almost to the question, I had um, some simple things. Maybe I can show you three that you can take with you if you take anything away from this. Um, this 
I'm going to give you, if you want to participate, fine. If you're like, I think this is stupid, then <laughs> it's totally up to you. So um, this one is mainly a neck stretch. So what I want you to do is you're just going to be sitting up kind of tall. And I want you to think, um, and a lot of people get this wrong too. Like when I tell them to take their left ear to their left shoulder, they drop it forward. So think of your head against the wall and drop it over. Maybe take that right hand and either grab behind your back or just grab underneath the chair. So you're going to tilt that right shoulder not to come up. You can also take your hand and kind of pull it over and see if you get a little bit of a neck stretch. Okay. So, and I'm going, these you want to do about 30 seconds. I don't, we don't have time for all that. And then even it out, I want y'all walking out of here. <laughs> so make sure you do the other side. But those are two neck stretches. The neck is, there's a lot of muscles in here. Think about it. This is like a 8 to 10 pound bowling ball on top of your neck. So it's really important to get that. We do a lot of this. So you can either take a band or something that where you can like pull your head back while you pull that forward. And that's going to get all these muscles right here which will take away from the 90% of this that we're doing. Um, so there's a neck, shoulder shrugs. I always say just roll them back. You know, we do enough of this forward. So always if you go to a class and they say, all right, everybody roll it forward, say, no, I was totally wrong. Because, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I find myself, if I go forward, then my posture goes forward. Um, you can do a lot of things for your back. The most important one I would probably recommend if I had to say one would be your spinal twist. And that's where you're sitting in your chair and she's already doing it. Perfect. I can use her for a model. So you're going to twist to the side, but you're not going to let your knees and everything go with it. So does that make sense? So yeah, you're going to, and Elizabeth's doing a good one right here. So her knees are staying perfectly here, and she's trying to turn. You can also look over your shoulder. And so that, and you're like, how's that for the back? That's not the way. But so here's your spine, and I say picture it like a wet towel. And as you twist that body around, you're just going to bring out all that tension that's sitting right in there. So, um, but I say a lot, like I teach a seniors class and I love them to death. If I do too many, they Back start calling out. Yeah. Pack of aging, there you go. But they'll remind me, like if I'm like, get, I like to keep them talking and give them memor you know, riddles and stuff. And if I get to do too many, they go, nine, 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 you know. We've only done like 12 or 13. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm not going to give y'all obvious ones. Um, Another good one is we call it like the letter L, and that's basically where you you would stand up and which well you would stand up and you'd like kind of go like that, but you want to try to flatten out the back instead of curve over because we're already curving over. So keep that in mind. Think about what what is my position most of the day, and then try to reverse that. Um, I mean, I have tons of pictures. I, I put some cards on the table. We're going to do question and answer. But if you're like, I didn't get to ask this question, or I didn't really want to ask this out loud, um, shoot me an email, and I'll be glad to. Because I, I love I love dumb questions. So, all right. Um, yeah, you're still good, but yep. got, we can start Q and A now. Okay. So, go ahead. Um, anybody have any health questions or? You got it all. <laughs> I'll keep talking. You don't matter. Um, yes. Isn't it true that you're, okay, if you're trying to do the activity that you really should be trying to get 10, 15 minutes at a time, you don't have to get the 30 minutes at a time, but to get the benefits of the activity, uh, the more intense activity, you can't just do a, a minute of intense and then. Yes. I mean, I totally, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, because you want, one of the biggest things is trying to get our heart rates up, and sometimes it takes about five minutes.